And kicking off the main card, every hardcore fan's excited for this one. Darren Elkins taking on Daniel Pineda. Two old war horses that are going to put on a show for us. And Daniel Pineda, I would say, is much more of a journeyman. I think Darren Elkins has had the more illustrious career. Pineda, he had a short stint with the UFC from 2012 to 2014. And a long time away, he returned to the promotion in August of 2020. And he's gotten 2-3-1 and one in his five fights since coming back. Overall, he's 5-7-1 and one in 13 UFC fights. Darren Elkins, he's been a UFC lifer pretty much. He signed with the promotion in 2010, and he's been with them ever since. And he's earned that nickname, The Damage. I mean, he's spilled arguably more blood in the octagon than any other fighter in UFC history. And he's been extremely successful. He's 18-10 and 10 in 28 UFC fights. He's been ranked in the top 10. He's fought some of the best fighters in the world. Coming off a win last October... And it's been a year for him outside the cage, but he's coming back in here trying to get a W, some quick cash. And, you know, his style's been the same since he's joined the UFC, Darren Elkins. He's going to look to grind you into the dirt. And if you can't stop it, it's going to be a long night for you. Elkins has made strides on the feet, but his striking is never going to be great. I mean, salt paw, 1-1-2, one, one, some 3-2s, the overhand right. But he isn't fast. He isn't powerful. Doesn't have the best defense. Kind of a punching bag, but he is... Great durability. He has an endless gas tank. He's relentless. And great timing on the double. If he can get that clinch, he can chain wrestle against the fence really well. His wrestling can get a little sloppy, but he's relentless. He can break opponents. And on top, he either likes to stay heavy in half guard and chip away or jump on your back at that body triangle and choke you out. And he has active ground and pound. And... I feel like in order to beat Elkins, you either have to be able to outgrapple him or work those straight punches, kicks up the middle, leg kicks, stuff the shots. And for Pineda, I think he's going to have to go the second route, which is the harder route. But Daniel the Pit Pineda, super strong physical grappler. On the feet, he's powerful but wild. He throws hard kicks and kind of big power punches, subpar defense. He does have the power to knock out Elkins if he connects, but I feel like it's probably going to devolve into more of a, a wrestling grappling match. Elkins, I think, is going to force some exchanges and then look to level change under them. And Pineda's hard to, hard to take down and even harder to hold down. He even sometimes will like throw these kicks where I think he knows he's going to end up on his back in order to scramble to top position. And he's been able to defeat a lot of grinders. He's done really well versus fighters with Elkins' style. His guillotine is nasty. Um, obviously, I mean, this guy has 28 wins, 28 finishes. And with Elkins, I mean, that's interesting because Elkins is a guy that's known as a, you know, never say die fighter who's only been submitted once against Charles Oliveira. He's been finished four other times by via strikes, but it just takes a lot to take him out of there. And then Pineda's 0-7 in decisions. But you look at Pineda, I mean, that's a little bit of a, like, he lost to Cobb, he lost to Andre Feely. I don't think anyone is going to say those guys are comparable. And Nathaniel Wood, I mean, much better striking. And it was a way different matchup than Elkins is going to be. You look at his other losses, a lot of his decision losses, the other four are, like, over 10 years ago. And he's been not going the distance in the majority of his fights. But I do believe that people aren't giving him enough credit for his conditioning. If it's more of a wrestling cardio uh, grappling fight, I think Pineda will be able to compete and be just fine cardio-wise because I've never seen him get tired in that kind of fight, really. And I slightly lean with Pineda. I think he's the stronger and bigger fighter. I feel like he has the superior grappling. Wrestling... Elkins probably has the edge there, but I just don't think Pineda is just going to get grinded out. I think Pineda either gets a guillotine or a sub and a scramble or wins a decision for the very first time in his career. I feel a Pineda decision bet could be sneaky, and I'm going to predict um, Pineda actually wins in a close decision here in this fight. 